Hello, everybody, and welcome to Live at Five. Yes, it's Dave's Live at Five today, and we're going to talk about virtual real estate. So I'm hoping that you get a lot of value out of this. And there's a lot to virtual, but we're going to try to keep it to just talking about virtual presentations, some virtual walkthroughs, and we can get into more and more. If you're interested at the end, there's a, there's a link for you to connect with me, and we can talk about it further to go on and, and have a deeper discussion about what's going on in virtual real estate. But the first question I'm going to ask you is, with everything coming out of this uh, life that we've had over the past year or so, and we're recording this today, May 24th, uh, 2021, and we are 14 to 15 months into this pandemic of COVID-19. And as, as restrictions are being relaxed and being uh, put aside, the question is, the values, the techniques and strategies that you used a year ago, will you continue to use them? That is why I'm doing this presentation today because I believe you need to work to the convenience of your consumer, of your client, of your customer. So let's get into the presentation. And I'd love to hear you know, anyone's um, questions as to why you will do it, why you will not do it. It's really important to think about this because convenience is really very important for most people, but also first-time home buyers. And, you know, that person-to-person face-to-face um, meeting is extremely important. I get that. But to save time, you can have this meeting prior to showings. You can also have this meeting prior to that meeting, which are virtual. So I'm going to get in. I'm going to share my screen and go through a presentation. It's not a long presentation. We're going to get into exactly what we're talking about with this. And let's go and let's pr- tr- let's let's do this and get rolling with it. Okay, so here's the slideshow, play from the start. All right, my name is Dave Finale. I am Real Estate Skill Builder, the founder of Real Estate Skill Builder, and we're going to talk about virtual real estate. So as you know, (laughs) we've been doing a lot of things virtually for a long time. As far as coaching, I have been coached and have coached virtually for my entire um, career of my coaching business and for the entire time that I've ever worked with a coach except for major events like Joe Stump did his main event. That's what he called it, the main event. Um, And then other events that were in person, which were basically at conventions, conferences, et cetera. Mostly all of the coaching was done virtually. So you're used to that that way if you've been coached. And if you haven't been, well, you're not used to it as much as others may be, right? Sorry about that. So, Let's get into it. So as we move forward, let's talk about how we're going to work with buyers. So, of course, we're going to get right into this, right? So you you need to determine whether they're going to work with you or not. So that's where the rapport building comes in. All Everything you do is all about the relationship. And honestly, this is whether it's in person or virtually, right? You got to make, you got to figure out if it makes sense for you to work together, right? Is there a fit? Will you be using a buyer agreement? Well, I hope so, right? So your virtual buyer presentation is going to be live or it could be recorded, right? So if it's live, you're going to get all the answers there. If you're doing a Zoom call, if you're doing it by Skype or however you're doing it, interactive webinar, you could do that as well. By the by the way, you could set up a first-time home buyer's uh, presentation through a webinar system. Okay, you can do that as well. That's virtual as well. So, but here we're talking about the buyer itself. So if you're going to do it recorded, you need to set up a system and you need several applications. One would be a form or survey. And there there, there are two basic systems that I have used in the past. I used to use WooFu, but uh, went into JotForm because JotForm uh, is a lot easier to use. It's a lot more um, uh, friendly to the person using it. Uh, And it's also, you can send out your pre-recorded buyer presentation along with a link to a jot form or WUFU form to get the answers like how many bedrooms, those kinds of things. 
You can also put statements in there. What do they think about it, right? So you can move through all that stuff. But your virtual buyer presentation um, should be live whenever possible. And if you're working with people from other areas that are coming in, if they, if they don't have the time to do the live, you can always send them the recorded information, then set up a follow-up Zoom call, right? So you want to move very quickly as speed to lead is important. However, understand that speed to lead is not as important all of the time. And that's a discussion for another session, right? So the search, right? They're going to look for the listings. You're going to send them listings just like the good old days. So that's not going to change. You're going to send them stuff. Well, honestly, years ago, it was different because we had the information. Now with the internet and Zillow, et cetera, et cetera, they're going to find houses that maybe you're not going to see. But the other thing is you want to make sure that they understand that there are homes you may know of that may not be on the MLS. We would call those off-market properties, which is why that buyer agreement is so important. Let's talk about that for a second. People say, Dave, how do I present that buyer agreement? Because this is something, you know what, that I'm going to tell you that a lot of people in some areas that have not used it, it's an area that you don't use it as much. For instance, I'm going to tell you in northern New Jersey, we have not used it up until recently a lot, where it's something that we're teaching everybody to start using. You know, 10, 15, 20 years ago was not a thing. So a lot of people are a little fearful of using it and they don't know how to use it. So in the state of New Jersey, we have to understand that we're going to also use the consumer information statement. And I know some, every state has something like this to discuss agency. Now you can place the explanation of the buyer agreement after the agency agreement, but you can also do it at the end of your buyer presentation and explain how it works. In New Jersey, unless it's got a rebate attached to it, it's a simple one page document. And basically what you're doing is you're listing that customer. So like you do a listing, a, whole, a sell listing, you're gonna do a buyer listing. So the whole idea is that you're gonna preview the, what you're going to do is you're gonna pick, um, the, I'm sorry, their search, they're gonna look for listings just like good old days as I started saying, sorry about that that uh, that little uh, uh, mistake there. Uh, but <clears throat> they're gonna see the things online and they're gonna see pictures as per usual. But here's what you're going to do differently. When they say, we want to see these three houses on Saturday, great. You're going to go preview them. If they say, Dave, we want to see these 10 houses on Saturday, great. You better preview them. Not only that, you better preview them and shoot preview video walkthroughs in person. And here's how it is. You want to make them think they're deciding what they're going to see. But your videos are going to save them time, effort, and hopefully money. Right? Look, in the day and age where they get different markets all over the place, this is going to work in any type of market. However, speed to the house in a seller's market that you may be experiencing is important. So this may not be something you may will be able to do, but as life moves on, as we as we evolve into post-pandemic society, these video walkthroughs are going to be very, very important for you. So you don't show 10 houses on a Saturday. I know a lot of you would love to show 10 houses. That means there's more inventory. But you're going to pick the houses that they want to see. They're going to pick the houses that they want to see. And you're going to, you're going to have them cross off houses off their list when you do the video walkthrough. I mean, you know as well as I do, you've gone up to a lot of these uh, and have not uh, people walk in and say, oh, we don't want to see this house but sometimes they're embarrassed not to go in, right? They're going to decide ultimately. So if you do the video and you are showing them the houses, you're going to try to get them down to three and you want to show them the best three houses. So in your expectation discussion, in that, in that buyer presentation, whether virtual or whether virtually recorded or live, you need to get the point apart, uh, across about expectations. Setting the expectations of in any market, number one is how you're going to show the house, that you're going to pick the best three. Right. Three, I said. Well, what, Dave, what happens if they want to see six? Okay. Do you want to keep showing them houses? When you, when you set the expectation, 
what a part of that expectation is going to be that they're going to they're going to tell you how serious they are, right? So you're going to show them those houses, right? So video, okay? When you're going to get ready to delete, see, this is how the buyers are going to do it. Is the buyers are all going to be set up so that you are showing them the houses they want to see. Your expectations you're going to set is also going to be about negotiations. Now, we're talking about lead generation. We're going to do everything in video. That's right. You're going to get into video. Video is virtual. So you're going to do videos on your area. What it's like to live, live there. What you need to know about the area. What you need to know about buying or selling in the area. Fun things to do. Things you don't want to know about the area. There are people that that buying a house that people don't want you to know. Is does the traffic suck in the area? Are there areas that suck with traffic? Are there things to do? What are where are the great restaurants? So these are the kinds of videos you're going to do in your market. You will pick your market, of course, or there's a market you're comfortable in, and you will consistently do video on what's going on there. Market statistics is also very cool. This is all virtual lead generation rather than that postcard and that phone call. This is virtual. Virtual walkthroughs. They're very simple, as I've already discussed. They can be done with your phone and uploaded to a portal or a special group. You're going to make these personal. Oh, you're asking me, what's a special group? Okay, so here's the thing. We said that you're going to do the video, right? And you're going to send it to them. You're going to do a preview of a walkthrough video, right? So how are they going to see this stuff? Well, you're not going to sell them the MP4s, send them the MP4s in an email, or you might, you could share them with um, with a Google uh, with Google Drive. You could do that, right? But what I would do is make it even more personal. You could set up a private group on Facebook and call it the Johnson's Home Search Portal. And this would be a group you set up just for them about their home search. And you can upload every video that you take and they can see that and they can see every video there. As time goes on, you will be communicating with them through that with pictures, et cetera, et cetera. And when they finally pick their home, you're going to be putting information on there. And then at the end, you'll give them ownership of it. And if they want to share it with their friends, it's just a, it's a great walk down memory lane as time goes on about what they went through their house. So it's going to be a private group on Facebook just for them and their home search. You can respond to answers and you're going to set up notifications on both of it. It's a way you're going to be able to communicate rather than through email, um, which could take a while, or text. You can upload documents. You can upload all kinds of things there. It's a great way to have your own portal but not pay for it. See, if you're going to upload videos, you might need Vimeo. You don't want to do it on YouTube because it's going to have to be private and you might forget and not make it private when you're having conversations. So let's not leave that to chance. Build a nice private Facebook group for your client. So <clears throat> your virtual digital presentations is pre-appointment material. Buyer and seller presentations by video with forms to get answers to questions after rapport is built. You can do anything after rapport is built, right? Anything you need. You're going to build rapport on the phone and through the videos that you've done about the area, about everything. You're going to do build rapport about everything you're doing. And again, Jotform or Wufu. You're going to do open houses virtually. You can do them every hour on the hour with waiting rooms and registrations through Zoom. So those are some virtual things that you can do. I do have other sessions I do just on doing open houses, doing virtual walkthroughs, et cetera. On-demand open houses. What is that? You can actually run on-demand open houses on different houses every day. And on-demand open house is just what it says. We talked about virtual open houses, but an on-demand open house is really simple. You set up a time. I'm sorry. You're setting up no time. You can set it up so it can only be seen through 48 hours and you market it that way. You're going to need some stuff to go with that, right? So you're going to need, with that, you're going to need, um, I have some slides mixed up here. You're going to need a screen recorder. You're going to need some type of webinar app, the forms, as we said. You're going to need a Calendly or a Once Hub scheduler. 
and you're going to need a home valuation landing page, right? You're also going to do um, other things with this for marketing presentations, seller's guides, your list of questions that you need answered, and an explanation video and a marketing presentation video. So let's just talk about different things. I apologize, the slides are in the wrong order, right? So you're going to be doing on-demand open houses. And what that's going to be is you're going to do, you can do an ad or you can just do an announcement. You can run an engagement ad to this. It's going to go to a landing page. The landing page is going to get their information, but it's going to have a video of explanation first. Once they fill out their information, they're going to be able to see the open house immediately. And it's going to be an extensive walkthrough that you do. You could do it and have someone film it for you, or you could actually do it with your iPhone, with your phone, and explain the house as you go through. Point out the great features of the house as you would if you were showing the home. Of course, you're not going to say this is the bathroom. Well, you're going to walk through and say, this is bathroom number one, or this is the master bath, or this is the half bath on the first floor. You're going to explain the home to them. After the video is done, it's going to take them to a list of questions on things that they want answered, and they're going to be able to ask you questions. This is done with the webinar app that we talked about, right? And it's going to have a link for an appointment for you to talk to them. So that's how an on-demand open house works. When we talk about listing presentations and marketing presentations, we want you to have your own marketing presentation. Of course, I say your marketing presentation. Do you have one? Is it yours? Is it all you? Did you get it from somebody else? Did you get it from your, from your franchise, from your company? And it's all about the company and not about you. You need to make it yours. You need to brand yourself one way or the other. You need to have your company's uh, information there for compliance, right? And you want to have it help you build rapport, just like everything and everyone else's. You want to build rapport with it. So you want to have it explanatory, but basically it's not going to be as big as the other one. So as I said, stuff you need, this is for the other thing. So let's just go into the virtual marketing presentation. You're going to review what you usually do for an in-person presentation. And then you're going to cut it in half. This is a video you're going to send them when they're interested in what you have. It's also going to be a video that you're going to send them before you meet them in person to do the pricing conversation, the pricing presentation, right? It's everything you have can be added verbally in the video and or live virtual presentation. Cutting it in half makes it less monotonous because if you've got 24 slides, which typically it is more than 24, you want to cut that in half or even more to about eight or 10 pages. Do your, your verbal uh, discussion of the things that are not in there. And you can combine slides as well. The best practice is to record the presentation and send it prior to your appointment, like pricing conversation, as I said, which is always done live, either virtually or in person, right? So the pieces are really simple of your virtual presentation, your virtual listing presentation. You're going to have a marketing presentation. And after the marketing presentation is done, there's going to be a link and a bunch of questions to ask them about their home. They're automatically going to get sent a seller's guide, right? The list of questions are going to be how long have you lived here? Where are you moving? It's going to be those qualifying questions. And then there's going to be an explanation video for those questions. And then the marketing presentation video. So the pricing presentation when you have this presentation done that we talked about, there's going to be go to a Calendly link or a scheduler of some type, which will allow them to set up a time with you. And you're going to give them the option of in-person or virtual, right? So you can do it live or, or on Zoom. The presentation is going to be the, the, the usual, typical CMA, how you would present it, right? It's going to be you live with some documentation. If it's a video, you're going to be sharing your screen back and forth, so you're gonna need a good screen recorder. Of course, one way or the other, you've previewed the home. And if you haven't, you need to make that a condition because of the price you're gonna come up with. That's your pricing presentation. So we've talked about a lot of different things here. I apologize for the slides not being in order, but 
I want you to understand that doing virtual rather than doing it the way we used to do it is going to make a lot more sense for you, okay? So doing it in a virtual manner is going to help you tremendously to be able for you to break through and to be convenient for your clients and customers. So understand that we're coming out of, at this time of May, 2021, hopefully completely and totally and permanently out of the pandemic restrictions. But the question I have for you as I asked you in the beginning is, are you going to do it the way you did it in 2020? Or are you going to do it the way you did it in 2019? So think about that question. Think about how it can save you time, effort, and money. Listen to this, right? For a buyer, they don't have to search for parking at your office. They don't have to worry about anything. Now, you can do these presentations, the buyer presentation, at a Starbucks, at a Dunkin' Donuts, at a diner, at a, at a Panera, if you have these things near you, uh, at, a, at a Waffle House, at a Cracker Barrel. Those are all over the place, right? Or you can do them through Zoom, through Skype. You can do them virtually, face-to-face. It will save them time. What happens if someone gets stuck at work or the babysitter doesn't show up or they bring the children with you? About the previews, the video preview walkthroughs, the video walkthrough previews, listen, think about this. They want to see 10 houses. Maybe they have little ones, maybe they don't. You're going to save them all this time by not having to either get a babysitter or get mom and dad to watch the kids or have them come with you, come with them, which is even probably more difficult. You're going to save them so much time. They're going to love you even more. When it comes to the marketing presentation, that should be in video no matter what. When it comes to lead generation, you should be doing tons and tons of video. When it comes to the pricing presentation and the marketing presentation, they will not be done together. So as we said, doing things virtually is the new way and should be a way that you continue to do things. If it's something you're not comfortable with and you'd like to be, please feel free, reach out. Let's have a conversation. Maybe I can help you get over that fear. I want your success and I just want to help people. So let's have a conversation. You can go to talktodave.work and set up a time. That's my schedule. You can set up a time. There'll be some questions to answer so I have a great familiarity so we can really uh, hone in and not waste any time getting to know each other. We can do some of that real quick with our, my, my little questions that I have. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Dave Finale, Real Estate Skill Builder. I look forward to, to talking with you even more. Uh, we've got workshops coming up. So reach out. Ask me about the workshops. We've got one this week. Um, in-person workshops, uh, limited to only a few people. So please reach out. It's all about prospecting. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you soon. Oh, we got a comment. Okay, let's see. What if they want to see eight houses every time? It is your responsibility to set expectations. Setting expectations. If they want to see eight houses every time you're going to show them houses, it means that maybe you have missed some. So the first time, if you do the video walkthroughs, it will get cut down because let's face it, if you've got eight great houses to show, there's a lot of inventory out there. I have yet to see eight great houses work for one buyer. There's never eight great houses. There might be three out of those eight. When you do the virtual walkthroughs, the video walkthroughs, and you send them to them to look, they're going to cut out most of those homes. They might only want to see two, three, or four then that's cool. Depending on what you want to do and what your strategy is personally, which one are you going to show first? The best one? Remember, you've walked through. You know what the best part of that house is. Showing that house is going to be the best one. Now, if you don't find anything the first time, there's something wrong there. You shouldn't be showing them 40, 50, 60 houses in a market that's got inventory. There's just something wrong there. Either they're not ready to buy and you have not qualified them properly, or they're not sure what they want. See, the whole idea behind showing them houses and doing virtual walkthroughs is to throw some things in there just to check in. For instance, 
if they say that they only want to work, I mean, in northern New Jersey, only want to work and see colonials, if you threw one split level in there or a cape, you'd see if they would like them or not. If they say only want these three towns and you throw a town in that's next to that, you can say it was a mistake. That's fine. But you want to test what they really want because sometimes they would go to that other town or they would go to a split level rather than a colonial. You've got to be strategic in what you're sending them. And if they want to see eight houses every time, you know what? You're going to turn into what's called a doorman. And you don't want to do that. You need to really set your expectations, not only about the homes that they want to see, but also about the negotiation strategies. You need to have a qualification, a pre-qualification conversation with them prior to the showings. So if you set up an appointment on Wednesday, you do your previews on Thursday and you send them to them and you're getting ready to show them four houses on Saturday, you need to have a conversation with them on Friday, Friday afternoon, Friday night. Say, okay, we're going to see these homes and say, look, you know, provided you find a house that you really love, are you ready to make a serious offer on that house when we're there tomorrow? If they say no, that's a red flag. If they say yes, but I need to have my dad see it, or I need to have Uncle Joe see it, or my sister Mary, you said, well, you know what? Let's get them with us tomorrow. Let's bring them along with us because we don't want you to miss that house. And this happens often. I hope that answered your question. If you have further questions, please reach out. You can, you can direct message me. You can email me at dfinale at gmail.com, or you can also, you can also um, uh, go to talk to dave.work. We set up a time to have a conversation, simple 20, 30 minute conversation. Um, it's just about what you got going on. I sell nothing on that call. I do not want your money. I want your success. Thanks so much, everybody. Take it easy.